Welcome to New York Nonprofit Media. I'm Jeff Stein, and I'm happy to be here with Phoebe Boyer, who's the president and CEO of the Children's Aid Society. Um, before we get started, just a little bit of background on the Children's Aid Society for those few viewers who aren't aware of all of the work that you're doing. It's a um, massive organization that has a 160-year history mm -hmm. here in New York, providing cutting-edge services for children in need, um, you know, historically. First free lunch programs, first foster care programs in New York, first kindergarten programs, so really a, a forward- lot of firsts. A lot of firsts, really yeah. forward-looking um, institution. And you're continuing that into the 21st century th with the cradle-to-college kind of approach. Right. That you know, everything from prenatal care to after school enrichment programs, sort of across the board, holistic yeah. approach to helping children. We like to think of it as really the ages and stages from zero to and through college. Yeah. We provide um, in that continuum a real set of supports around education, social and emotional support, health and wellness, and family support. Yeah. So that's how you sort of tie a bow <laughs> around the multi-service organization. Yeah, yeah, it's it's incredible work and really important work. And um, I know that you're fairly new to the position. Six it's months six today. Six months in. <laughs> you, you took over for Richard Bury, who yes, I did. Uh, went on to be um, deputy mayor for yeah. de Blasio, heading up uh, pre-K. Absolutely. Um, so I wanted to ask you first just about your history. I, I know that you have a lot of experience in you know, government, nonprofits, uh, private sector. Yeah. How are you sort of amalgamating all of that into your current position? Well, I think, um, you know, while I would like to say in hindsight it was all perfectly planned to lead to this <laughs> opportunity, but in a lot of ways it really does. I mean, I've spent 15 years um, investing in some of the best nonprofits across the city and in the country through the work of the Tiger and Robertson Foundations. Mm -hmm. um, and so I learned a lot about the field and best practices. Right. Um, and one of the things that attracted me to Children's Aid Society was that in many ways it has the full portfolio of things that I like working on in one place. Um, but the nature of being in a foundation is that you are a little bit removed from the work. <laughs> um, and so now I have the ability to have a little bit more influence on how we actually do our work. When I was in direct service in foster care before, um, you know, you l work in your silos of your area. And I now have um, a great deal of perspective of the, of the rest of the um, different organizations and different fields. So while we do foster care, we're also involved in education. We have job training programs. Um, and because I've had this varied background, I can bring all of that um, expertise to this. So I think it, it actually really helps. And we're a public-private partnership, right? We're a nonprofit funded by government, funded by the private sector. So really, it's all every day something comes into play that requires all those experiences. Right, right. And how's that sort of um, impacted your leadership philosophy? You know, all of those experiences being in government, being you know, sort of on the ground. Yeah, I mean, I think one learns um, lots of different things about management and different settings require different things. I mean, from my perspective, I've always been a pretty open and direct manager. I have an incredibly talented team at Children's mm -hmm. Aid Society. It's actually about harnessing that talent um, and being open and direct. Um, that hasn't changed. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I was that way in the foundation world yeah. um, as well, and in direct service and in government um, before that. Um, but I'm really, my approach is really about being a team player. Um, I'm part of the team. I have the privilege of representing the organization, um, but I don't do this work alone. Right? Right. I mean, the, the foster care worker who's up late at night working with a kid in crisis um, is critically important to the work that we do. Yeah. I get to talk about that. They get to do the actual work. So my job is enabling them to be able to do their work in the best way possible. Yeah, and, and another really you know, essential part of leadership is I read that you're the first female president and CEO of the Children's Aid Society in over 160 years. Right. You know, I was reading that uh, women make up a majority of the workforce, 52%, but less than 15% of executive directors. So 
I was hoping to get your thoughts My on, thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah. and just is why it's essential for women to be in leadership it is positions. It, it is essential, but you know, I was hired because I'm the right person for the job. Right, right. Um, and I have all of the skills. That said, I have a very different um, approach. It's, I would say, not necessarily female, but it's <laughs> Phoebe approach. Right. Um, to management, but it does mean a tremendous amount. I mean, my the majority of our staff at Children's Aid are women. Um, we work with a lot of single working moms. Um, it means a different thing when I walk into a graduation of a parenting class um, and mothers are talking about what their struggles are and I can reflect that actually it's probably the first time the CEO is also a mom um, right. and can reflect on that. So it's, an, it's a really important set of perspectives and understandings. Um, it doesn't mean, you know, it's, it is um, somehow a different style. I mean, it is a di I'm a different style, but so is every right. individual. So. Right. Uh, switching gears a little bit to you know, some of the work that you're doing right now, I saw that there was a big groundbreaking ceremony. Big groundbreaking, yeah, for, very exciting. For the exciting. new Bronx Community School, a $45 right. million dollar investment in the South Bronx. Yeah. I was hoping to talk have, a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah, and, sure. and also just get a sense of what goes into managing such a, you know, project. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is um, quite an extraordinary investment. I will say it's a little bit of the missing puzzle piece. We made a commitment a number of years ago to invest in the South Bronx, and Children's Aid Society has a variety of different programs and sites on Southern Boulevard. Um, this investment is building a community center and a school um, that is really an extension. So we have a healthcare clinic, we have our foster care, our next generation center, our early childhood programming within a few blocks on the same strip. So this is, this is furthering an investment in a community um, that we have been involved in for a long time. Um, but it is, it's very exciting. It's a big project. It takes a lot of expertise. We both have that talent inside and we also you know, reach out to experts um, who know how to manage construction projects. Great. So that's, that's how we do it. But it does, it does make for a varied day. One minute I'm talking about bond financing to you know, <laughs> designs of the building. So it's really quite exciting. Right, and so what are the other projects that are on the horizon for 2015. Yeah, so the one of the things that attracted me to Children's Aid Society was that the organization over the last few years and under the leadership of Rich Bury really went through a lot of um, strategic planning and thinking about how to build out this full continuum of care um, for kids in various communities. We focus on Staten Island, um, the Bronx, we focus on Washington Heights and Harlem. Um, and so part of it is building out our full set of services in those communities and reinvesting. There's also a part that is investing in our own capacity in terms of performance management um, and our systems. Um, and so, you know, that's where I'm spending um, the bulk of my time. I think we also have the ability to talk about the power of a multi-service organization. Um, our families often interact with government silos. Mm -hmm. That's just the nature of their lives. Mm -hmm. um, and the power of an organization like Children's Aid Society is we have the ability to break down those barriers for them mm -hmm. and help them succeed. So though, that's what we're working on is that strategic plan. Um, it's what attracted me to the organization, so. Yeah, I, I, maybe a final question. I know it's a really difficult budgetary environment, environment for a lot of nonprofits and just sort of your thoughts on navigating the current situation, whether it's a small nonprofit, a medium sized yeah. organization or a larger organization like Children's Aid Society. Yeah, I mean I think this is the nature and excitement of the nonprofit field is where we manage with very limited resources. Um, Children's Aid Society is in the very enviable position of both having public and private support and mm -hmm. Um, and we have to look very carefully at how we use our resources. Government does not fund us to do the work at the level that we need to be doing it. Um, and as a result, we you know, basically leverage our public dollars with private dollars. There are limits. Um, and so we're constantly assessing um, that and being careful and efficient about how we use our resources. So it's, um, you know, it's an ongoing, ongoing 
discussion all year, every year, yeah. um, as to where we find the resources to do the incredible, important work that we do. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.